first up, go to my nicosteves.com website for all things about my book. There are links that take you directly to the Amazon page where my book, The Very Fine Light, is sold. I chose to continue podcasting about this ongoing Easter feasting because these now almost 50 days of celebration has indeed provided me with a peaceful strength and its duration has been overlooked for too long because it's a lengthy cycle in people time. The other reason is to call attention to the Virgin Mary's role in the days following the resurrection. And now, looking at the 10 days between the Ascension and Pentecost, it's worth remembering that the Apostles could only guess about what Jesus meant when he told them on his day of Ascension that they should wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. Can you imagine how they must have felt? What could the Holy Spirit be? What did this mean? However, at the same time when the apostles were questioning their unknown, the Virgin Mary herself was singularly familiar with the Holy Spirit before the apostles were. The Virgin Mary had a clear understanding of the Holy Spirit before Pentecost. Indeed, her experience began around the time of the Incarnation, and she no doubt provided a guiding light during that period between the Ascension and Pentecost, while the Apostles prayed in the upper room before they received the gift of the Holy Spirit and began their commissions as Jesus had asked of them. To quote the late Roman Catholic Bishop Marlino of Madison, Wisconsin, quote, So, at Pentecost, we have the Apostles gathered with the Virgin Mary right in the center and the power of the Holy Spirit unleashed upon them so that Jesus can come and dwell with us, teaching us the whole truth and reminding us of everything that Jesus said and did." There is more information about this on my website, nicosteves.com, and also St. Joan of Arc and the apparitions she followed is remembered. Her courage and triumphs for France, following her love for the Virgin Mary, who she continued to honor during Joan of Arc's remarkable commission. This podcast continues with excerpts about Joan of Arc from my first book, The Constant Procession. God-fearing and humble leadership is what her son, Jesus the Christ, preached. This, it would seem, is the Madonna's guide as she apparates. She speaks from the heart to those who can hear her, regardless of religious affiliation. Still another example of challenged human leadership when political leaders and church officials are too intertwined is during the Middle Ages with Joan of Arc's experience in Europe at the end of the Hundred Years' War between France and England in the first part of the 1400s. However, though her vision, she sees St. Michael, St. Catherine, and St. Margaret rather than the Virgin Mary, she held fast till her dying hour to pledge her faith to service to God and the Blessed Holy Virgin. Joan of Arc in 1431, at the tender age of 19, had been imprisoned and burned at the stake for heresies against the church. As she burned, she called out loud to God to forgive them of their sins and told the priests there to offer a mass for her. Joan of Arc had seen these saints apparate seven years before. They influenced her chosen path. She inspired the French people and led them onto the battlefield, breaking the stalemate of the Hundred Years' War between England and France. At an age when most young women of today are becoming college co-eds, and in an age where women answer to their husbands, Joan took over an army, which she led to victory, had the power to install a king, all the while insisting on her soldiers to prepare for battle by going to confession and taking communion before each battle. After installing the king, her goal had been to go back home. The king asked Joan to continue to fight on. 
saying she, quote, heard the voices no more, unquote, she just wanted to go back to Ark, to her mother and father. But she yielded to the king's request. Joan of Arc got captured and given over to the English. Once they had her, they put her on public trial for heresy. The English had their religious leaders entrap this young country bumpkin on theological doctrine, forcing her to testify against herself, demanding her to specify whom she maintained her allegiance to. The choices, quote, God in heaven or his leaders on earth, unquote. Her choice cost her her life. So these Christian leaders burned her at the stake. Religious leaders had to change and they came back to the roots of Christianity, refocused to actions that followed a more Christ-like, God-fearing approach. As part of this return came an admission of wrongdoing by the church and recognition of the good works of Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc gained sainthood also. This is Nico Steves, and I hope you enjoyed this installment. My book can be found using the title, The Very Fine Light, on Amazon.com. Please feel free to contact me at nicosteves.com. That's N-I-K-O-S Steves, S-T-E-V-E-S, dot com. If you like this episode, and for more, share them with friends. This is Nico Steves. Thank you. See you next time.